Today I was giving a presentation about medical marijuana for neurologic purposes. And the reason we decided to do that presentation is because a lot of our patients are using medical marijuana for neurologic purposes and whether or not you agree with it as a neurologist, it's important to be educated about it so you can co counsel your patients and talk to them about uh, its use. So the situation we have here in the U.S. now is that uh, marijuana is still federally illegal and so states individually have made their own marijuana laws and so at a national meeting like this it's hard to counsel individual providers because everyone comes from a different state. And so what I tried to do was to um, tell people about some of the different laws in different states to give them ideas about that and then to talk about the evidence that exists uh, for marijuana products in the treatment of certain neurologic conditions. One of the main challenges, and this came up um, in some questions from a lot of people who are in the audience, is that the way a lot of our state marijuana laws have been written is that we don't actually have the ability to prescribe marijuana like we would another medication. So for example, if a patient comes to me and I want to give them a medication, I write down the milligrams and how many times per day and such, and it's very specific and that's a prescription. In most states, all we can do is allow patients to have access to the product. And so then we don't have any control over what particular product they get or how they use it. And I think doctors are very uncomfortable with that overall because we might like to recommend, for example, a CBD only product. CBD can be very useful for seizures and certain kinds of pain and for the most part seems to be a non-addictive substance without any psychoactive properties. But the way that the laws are written, we can't do that. So we don't have control over that. So we just have to make a decision to either allow them access to the program or not. I think we would like to see more research into exactly the products that we have available and what kinds of neurologic problems they're good for. It seems like there's pretty good research so far about uh, CBD products in epilepsy, or certain kinds of epilepsy anyway, um, for chronic pain and um, to some extent for spasticity associated with multiple sclerosis. That's where the data is best in neurologic conditions. Um, but because the products vary state by state, we don't know if those individual products are good for those particular kinds of problems. And so it would be really nice for us to have that data so we could better advise our patients. There's also a lot of stuff that's available out online that people can just order, different kinds of supplements and things with CBD in them, and it's very hard to know how to advise patients like that. So it ends up being more of an issue of common sense uh, rather than based on science, which um, is not the best situation. In the state medical marijuana programs, the, the product itself is technically not a medicine and is not approved by the FDA and so therefore is not covered by insurance at all. Um, and that can be good and bad in some ways in that it prevents, because the, the medications are so expensive that they, it really limits the availability of the medication. And so on the one hand that might be a good thing because it is a potentially addictive substance and so because it's so expensive it makes it less likely that someone's going to get a whole lot of it. Um, but on the other side, you know, then our patients who don't have the financial ability to get it are, are not able to have access to that medication. And it's not covered by insurance at all, of course, because it's not you know, an approved medication. Well, the AEN actually last year in 2018 um, made an official statement about medical marijuana. And I think one of the points in that statement was that right now, marijuana is at the federal level a Schedule I controlled substance. And what that means is that it is a substance for which there is no accepted medical indication. That's what Schedule One means anyway. Um, and that has highly addictive properties, right? So the federal government has designated this um, medical marijuana or any marijuana in this category, and it makes it very difficult for us to do the research that we need to do to try and see if it's effective because it's very, very tightly regulated. And so what the AAN has said, and what I would agree with, is that we as neurologists and medical providers and researchers really support the loosening of this and the rescheduling of marijuana to a lower schedule so that it can be more accessible for research. And then we'll really know whether these um, marijuana or products made out of marijuana are helpful for neurologic conditions or not. Um, the data is still not as good as it should be. When people talk about medical marijuana, they mean a lot of different things. Um, Epidiolex is a uh, CBD product that comes from a natural marijuana source, but has gone through all of the regular um, 
processes, clinical trials, FDA approval, um, and is manufactured in a very standardized way, just like any other medication um, that you might be giving to your patients. And so because that is a very standardized medication that, that is FDA approved, then we at least know what's, what's in it and it has proven efficacy for certain kinds of epilepsy. Um, and so that's very helpful, but it's, an, it's not a medication that is accessible to all of our patients. So it, it was approved for a very narrow indication, um, which means that you as a physician could choose to prescribe it for other indications in an off-label fashion, but because it's a new medication, it's expensive, and insurance companies are not gonna pay for it if you're, for example, trying to prescribe it for neuropathic pain. Um, so I have tried to use it for neuropathic pain and have not had luck with getting it covered, which I understand the reason. Um, but that's really in a class in and of itself um, and is different from the medical marijuanas that are available on a state-by-state -state basis. So it would be great to have things like Epidiolex that are you know, more um, tested and controlled but be available for other um, indications. I think that that would be really useful.